Hello, George Romanich here. In today's video, we are introducing new extremely important concept in atmospheric sciences and fluid dynamics. And this is the concept of natural coordinate system. As you will see in today's video and later on this channel, this coordinate system is particularly useful when we need to investigate dynamics in the flow field or some kinematics of the flow field. I already introduced several coordinate systems on this channel and I told you they are all important. And indeed they are, because we use different coordinate systems depending on the type of the problem that we want to investigate or type of phenomena that we are interested in. So consequently, I already introduced, of course, Cartesian coordinate system, polar coordinate system, cylindrical coordinate system, spherical coordinate system, as well as pressure or isobaric coordinate system. Natural coordinate system that I will talk about today also has three principal coordinate directions, coordinates. And that's logical because we live in a three-dimensional space around us. Now, in the vertical direction, coordinate in this coordinate system is exactly the same as in Cartesian coordinate system, and that's height, z. But in the horizontal plane, things change. And they change as follows in respect to Cartesian coordinates, I mean. One principal coordinate in natural coordinate system is actually tangent line to horizontal velocity in each point in the flow field. And another principal coordinate axis is normal to this tangent line, but direction of the normal is such that it is to the left from the flow field direction. Well, this was in words. If you didn't properly catch what I just said, no worries, because right now we will demonstrate that both mathematically as well as using schematics. Let's start. Let's start by assuming we have a motion of an air parcel along this trajectory. And the motion is like so. Natural coordinate system has orthogonal set of unit vectors T, N, and K as follows. If I take a point over here on this trajectory, then unit vector T is tangent to that point. This is T. So more formally, we can say that unit vector T is parallel to the horizontal velocity at each point in the flow field. Therefore, T is tangent. N is normal to horizontal velocity at each point, but by convention, it points to the left of motion. Therefore, N would be normal to T, and positive N would be to the left of motion. And lastly, unit vector K is just as, as in Cartesian coordinates positive upwards. So we can see already that T cross N will give us K. Very well. So how do we define velocity in this natural coordinate system? Well, from figure, we can already see that velocity is, as a vector, is equal magnitude times this unit vector t, where v has to be a positive number, or rather we would say it's a non-negative number because we define this path to be along the motion. So how do we get this velocity v? We see how we get vector, but how do we get v? Well, v is defined as ds dt, where ds is distance along this curve followed by the parcel moving in the horizontal plane. What do we mean by that? Well, let's say 
As this parcel moves in the next point in time, it is over here. So the unit vector over here will be something like this. It will have the same length as this one, but it will have different direction. This patch of path over here is delta s. So in principle, you can see that v will be this delta s over some period of time delta t, but as delta t goes to zero, we retrieve this equation over here. Okay, so the next question is how do we find acceleration in this coordinate system? Well, acceleration is dv dt. And that will be d of vt dt. And that will be equal t, I use product rule for differentiation, dv dt plus v dt dt. Well, we know how to handle this one, so let's investigate how to handle dt dt. So to analyze this term, I will again use this figure and uh, use the change of this t unit vector in time to find this rate of change. First, we will define radius of this curvature that we see here in the following way. I go to the next point where the air parcel is, and I again have unit vector n, like so. Now if I continue plotting these unit vectors, you will see that they have common cross point, and this common point represents center of curvature for this path over here. So we can say that this is r, and this is also r, this entire length. And this entire length, it's r. Now at the same time, what is the change of this unit vector t along the path? Well, in this new point, I can find change compared to this point if I translate this vector over here. And we already did this drill in our video on uh, Earth curvature terms. So you can see that this blue vector will be some t plus delta t. And this black vector is just old t. And this is their difference. This is difference delta t. Now from this figure, I hope you can see that this angle is the same as this angle over here. The reason is that this r is normal to this t. And this r is normal to this t plus delta t. So angle between these two therefore has to be angle between these two. Which means from similarity of triangles, we can write. So from this figure and the arguments that we made, we can write that this delta s over either of these, but they are r, so delta s over intensity of r is the same as this delta t over either of these two, but these are unit vectors. So intensity of this delta t over intensity of t. I hope you realize that these are numbers, these are intensity of these vectors, and here I use absolute value because r can be both positive and negative. r is positive if the air parcel is turning to the left, and r is negative if the air parcel is turning to the right. In other words, in this region over here, r would be negative. So to account for all these possibilities, we use absolute value over here. But we know that intensity of unit vector t is just one. That's unit vector. By definition, this has to be one. So from this, we can write that intensity of this delta t over delta s so this over this is equal 1 over absolute value of r. Or in the vector form, we can say that dt 
ds is equal n over r. How did we get this from here? Well, you have to take delta s goes to zero in the limit case, and then the upper one becomes dt, the bottom one becomes ds, but I want to have everything in the vector form. So what is the direction of r? Well, direction of r is always parallel or anti-parallel to n, and that sign will be included on the right side of this equation. Again, you have to know that intensity of vector n is 1. So if you want this equation in scalar form, then clearly it just reduces to this equation, as you can see. So with this result over here, we can go back to this term and write that dt, dt is equal dt ds ds dt we use chain rule but that is equal dt ds is n over r and ds dt is just v or when i now plug this over here i will get that dv dt is equal first term t dv dt plus this term and this v and this v will give me v squared over r and this is acceleration in the natural coordinate system this term over here represents acceleration following this motion. This term over here is the rate of change of speed of this air parcel. So maybe let's add, this is, as you can see, this is some motion of air parcel. This is that air parcel that is moving. So this term is the rate of change of speed of that air parcel. And this term over here is centrifugal acceleration due to curvature of this trajectory. So now, as a nice exercise, let's see how different forces will look in natural coordinate system. We have Coriolis force minus F K cross V, and it has this form in Cartesian coordinate system. Well, in natural coordinate system, it will be minus F K is the same. K unit vector exists in natural coordinate system cross well v we just said is vt vt and this is equal negative f v n how did we get that well notice from that figure that k cross t is equal n you can see that from here k cross t, when I cross these two, the result goes into n direction. And this makes sense because in northern hemisphere, where f is positive, Coriolis force deviates motion to the right, but positive n is to the left. So that's why this minus sign exists over here. Let's look at the pressure gradient force, minus 1 over rho nabla p, where this z indicates that nabla is taken on horizontal surfaces, constant height, and this is equal minus 1 over rho. Well, this will simply be delta p delta s times t, and plus delta p delta n times n. So, pressure gradient in the t direction and pressure gradient normal to the motion. Let's see pressure gradient force in the p coordinate system, so that will be negative nabla along the constant pressure surfaces of phi, where phi is gz, geopotential. Well, this will be negative delta phi delta st, 
and plus delta phi delta n times n. So from here, notice that we can write horizontal momentum equations in the natural coordinates as follows. Let's do it here. dv dt is minus delta f delta s. So this is in the direction of motion. And normal to the direction of motion, we have v squared over r plus f v equals negative delta phi delta n. I hope all of you now know how we got these two equations. We got them by looking at this red equation over here. And we want to express motion in the direction of t and n unit vectors. Well, in the direction of t, we have acceleration dv dt, which appears over here. And the only force is the t component of the pressure gradient force expressed in the p-coordinate system. And that's over here. Now, in the n direction, we have centripetal acceleration over here. And as you can see, it appears over here. We have Coriolis force in the n direction. I moved it here to the left. And we have delta F, delta n from the pressure gradient force in the p-coordinate system. So what would be expression for geostrophic wind, for example, in natural coordinate system? Well, that's very easy to find. What is geostrophic wind? If we have two isobars, let's say this one is P, this one is P minus delta P, we have geostrophic wind being parallel to the isobars. Check my video on geostrophic wind with the high pressure to the right in northern hemisphere. But if isobars are straight like this, then you can see that their radius of curvature is either plus minus infinity, depending in which direction this geostrophic wind is, or depending on the gradient of pressure. So if we plug in here that R is infinity, you will immediately retrieve that F, but Vg, that is now geostrophic wind, is equal negative delta F delta N. And this is expression for geostrophic wind in the natural coordinate system. Clearly, geostrophic wind is a balance of forces, so acceleration disappears. There is no first equation. The beauties of natural coordinate system. I would appreciate if you would let me know in the comment section below for how many of you this coordinate system is completely new concept and how many of you already used it in your education or later in your career. If this is new for you, do not worry, we will use this coordinate system a lot in the future, so you will get proper physical feeling for it. In the next several videos, I will use this coordinate system to investigate balanced flows in the atmosphere. Today I already showed you how geostrophic wind looks like using natural coordinate system, but in addition to, to geostrophic wind, we will investigate several other balanced flows. And these are inertial oscillations, cyclostrophic wind, gradient wind. All these are extremely important concepts in atmospheric sciences, and fortunately they are also simple concepts. So until inertial oscillations in the next video, goodbye.